Romance is out, and platonic relationships are in. TV shows are centering on sisterhoods, romances, and platonic opposite-sex buddies. Celebrity friendships generate huge interest. And today, we are with BuzzFeed to take the best friend forever test to see how well we actually know each other. And story endings aren't necessarily giving us romantic closure, while focusing a lot more on how non-romantic relationships can be among the most impactful in our lives. Relationships between men and women on screen have traditionally been depicted as romantically charged, whether the attraction is one-sided and unrequited. And I know we're friends and we've had experiences, but I want more. Or if the two friends just need a push to realize they've always been in love. Daphne. I was wondering if you might be free for a date. Oh my God, yes! But more and more stories today are moving beyond friend zone or friend to lover tropes of the past to make way for more positive, nuanced platonic relationships on screen. There's even the Apple TV show called Just Platonic, which investigates the way that, as men and women settle down with families, making new opposite sex platonic friendships often becomes culturally discouraged and taboo. Can't be friends with a girl. But illustrating women and men having strong platonic relationships affirms to all genders that they are worth more than solely their ability to be in a romantic or sexual relationship. Your friendship means a lot to me, and you look very beautiful. Okay, weirdo. Here's our take on the much-needed revamp of male-female friendships on screen and why these platonic relationships are so important to audiences. All opposite-sex platonic friendship stories on screen have to refer back to When Harry Met Sally, which was all about the question, can men and women really be friends? Men and women can't be friends because the sex part always gets in the way. The movie ultimately proved Billy Crystal's Harry right. Of course, the friends to lovers trope is grounded in a heartwarming message that real love is based first and foremost on a great friendship. But despite those good intentions, in the friends to lovers trope, friendships between men and women become merely a prerequisite to their inevitable romantic relationship. And this trope's prevalence has skewed audiences' expectations of opposite-sex friendships, thus reinforcing the cultural idea that these bonds are only worthwhile if they have some romantic potential. You have no idea. Don't do that. What your friendship means to me. Come on. I don't want to do that. I want to be more than that. In the early 2000s, we saw this shift to a villainization of male and female friendships, with more films and television shows using the friend zone as a seething insult or a term of despair. You've got exactly 48 hours to get the kiss. Otherwise, one of you's gonna overthink it. Okay, she's gonna overthink it. And then you end up permanently stuck in the friend zone. When a character, particularly a woman, didn't feel a romantic connection that a man felt, the male character was punished with their friendship. She puts it in the friend zone and then tortures the shit out of them. Even stories of male and female friendships targeted for children and tweens were tied up with complicated crushes and rejection. Shows like Lizzie McGuire and Zoe 101 showed the wide-eyed boy best friend of our lead character doomed to have an unrequited love that everyone other than the main character was aware of. Dear Lizzie, I think I may like my best friend as more than a friend. Until, of course, one day the girl realizes that she also loves her boy best friend. Gordo? What? I'm going to be your best friend and put you onto an amazing VPN service. This video sponsor, Private Internet Access. If you don't know what a VPN is, think of it like a tunnel providing safe passage between you and the internet. Browsing the web with an unprotected device transmits a ton of your information out into the open, which can be viewed by numerous shady entities. Private Internet Access is a fantastic VPN that hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection from the prying eyes of hackers. The app is so easy to use and provides a ton of benefits apart from just making your information bulletproof. With the help of private internet access, you can access region-restricted content from around the world, such as exclusive streaming libraries, popular websites, and sporting events. By changing your IP address to one of the 84 countries available, you'll be unlocking a brand new ecosystem of content that we cover on our channel. Like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, a comedy about best friends that's streaming on Netflix UK. 
Plus, you can protect an unlimited number of devices at the same time with one private internet access subscription. It's available on all platforms and never stores your data, making it the most transparent VPN service out there. So sign up risk-free today for a 30-day money-back guarantee and 24-7 customer support. By clicking our link in the description, www.piavpn.com slash the take, you can get 83% off on private internet access. That's just $2.03 a month. And you also get four extra months completely free. Try private internet access today and browse safely. But what's so damning about meaningful friendships of the opposite gender? Actually, the term platonic love, which is named after Plato, has long been interpreted by philosophers over the centuries not just to mean lacking romance or sex, but also to speak to inspiring each other's souls to greater heights of wisdom and spirituality. So, in light of that picture, to call a platonic pair just friends is more than a little reductive. Some stories have already highlighted the powerful potential of characters ultimately settling for a platonic friendship. Buffy the Vampire Slayer's three main characters and best friends were originally in a very prominent love triangle. Hey, I like you. Let's go to the dance together. Direct and to the point. Old Buffy's not here. You can practice on me some more. However, once Willow and Xander come to accept that their wishful romances aren't meant to be, they come into their power, literally defeating evil and a hellmouth with their friendship. You know we love you, right? We totally do. Oh God, we're gonna die, aren't we? In Veronica Mars, best friends Veronica and Wallace never harbor romantic feelings towards each other, yet they continually act as the other's support system, confide in each other, and understand one another in a way most can't. Underneath that angry young woman's show, there's a slightly less angry young woman who's just dying to bake me something. Your marshmallow, Veronica Mars? Veronica and Wallace also share platonic touch on screen. They sit close to each other, casually hug, and hold on to each other during vulnerable moments. But it's never misconstrued or interpreted as romance. The sitcom Friends, despite the title, ended up with four of the six coupled up, and had audiences rooting for the one true pairing Ross and Rachel through their 10-season Will They Won't They saga. I got off the plane. But later shows centered around friend groups, like Community, directly spelled out to audiences that, while romance may weave in and out of the group dynamics, their friendships are where the heart of the story lies. To be blunt, Jeff and Britta is no Ross and Rachel. Your sexual tension and lack of chemistry are putting us all on edge, which is why, ironically, and hear this on every level, you're keeping us from being friends. Romantic relationships do ebb and flow within the group, but at the end of the day, the most interesting part of the show is their ability to remain tight-knit friends despite their vastly different backgrounds. Friends Joey and Phoebe are the only pair in the group who don't end up coupled off with each other, and at times they almost seem to have a purer relationship than the others. They spend quality time together as just the two of them, make sacrifices for each other, and make their affections known. When the revolution comes, I will have to destroy you all. <laughs> Not you, Joey. Perhaps the most valuable testament to the importance of this dynamic is Seinfeld. The series writers felt pressured to commit to a will-they-won't-they they relationship between Jerry and Elaine. Because this is very good. However, after Jerry pulled fans of the show on the road, the audience overwhelmingly preferred the two as friends, and their obligatory romance was quickly written out. Free of expectations to end up as the girlfriend, Elaine's character was able to flourish, drifting away from pressure to be the voice of reason, and joining her male counterparts as an equal player in their antics, proving that women can be just as messy, antisocial, and odd as men. Move to Long Island and have a baby already? I really like the city. In the mid to late 2000s, we started seeing more platonic male-female duos centered around the workplace on screen. 30 Rock turned the enemies to lovers trope on its head when Liz Lemon and Jack Donahue's relationship quickly grew from enemies to close friends. A friendship that spans seven seasons, never skewing romantic or sexual in nature. In fact, the reason Jack and Liz are an interesting duo is because they are so incompatible at surface level. New York, third wave feminist college educated, single and pretending to be happy about about it overscheduled, undersexed, you buy any magazine that says healthy body image on the cover. But as they get to know each other more, through witty repartee and casual insults, the more alike their characters are revealed to be in their cores. Both Liz and Jack are ambitious in their respective careers, with hard exteriors and defensive attitudes that are only chiseled away by their unique friendship. Obviously, our relationship, however you define it, is more interesting than some dating 
scenario, and obviously to ruin what we have with a tawdry yet expert sexual encounter would have been a mistake. And while their relationship may start out as a mentor-mentee dynamic, it grows into an equal partnership, one in which they never sacrifice who they truly are, but challenge themselves and flourish with each other's viewpoints in mind. There's so much to live for! Don't you want to know how Mad Men ends? Oh, oh and goes to work for Peggy! A more dramatic pairing to Liz and Jack's comedy duo can be found in the mentorship-turned-meaningful relationship between Don Draper and Peggy Olsen in Mad Men. While gender roles of the 60s are an obstacle to their relationship, it doesn't present itself as sexual tension. It's Don's unwavering faith in Peggy's work that gives them a deep connection, one that he doesn't find in his own romantic partners. Somebody very important to me died. Oh. <laughs> the only person in the world who really knew me. That's not true. He may struggle to watch his mentee rise above him in the ranks of business, but their shared ambition and history of seeing one another through vulnerable moments allows him to pass her the symbolic torch. I worry about a lot of things, but I don't worry about you. With the workplace as the foundation for these relationships, men and women are given the space to share their dreams and goals, creating powerful connections and planting the roots of meaningful friendships. Ron and Leslie in Parks and Recreation are stark opposites with very different aspirations and values, but they support each other where it counts. We did it because we care about you. You had a dream and we wanted to support your dream. That's what you do when you care about someone. This shift showed us that craving friendship is just as valuable as wanting a romance, and that fostering platonic relationships can give us different perspectives into our own lives, but ultimately provide us with someone who will always have our backs. In Ted Lasso, football manager Ted and his boss, club owner Rebecca, eventually become deep friends in a way that shapes both their lives for the better in so many ways. If you go, I go. In Platonic, former best friends Will and Sylvia feel a bit weird about reconnecting in middle age, especially since she has a busy family life and he has a cool job as a brewmaster at a bar. Your friendship with Will is not built for this phase of life. But as they spend time together, they have fun and behave authentically to a degree they can't experience with others in their everyday life. And in moments, we see how Will can support Sylvia in an uncomplicated way that her husband at times can't, because his life is so much more bound up with hers. Like when Sylvia drunkenly starts a confrontation with her husband's boss, and Will doesn't try to stop or undermine her. I give you your speech back if you can remember my name in three guesses. Huh. When you find a true friend, what does it matter whether that person is of your same sex? <laughs> Centering platonic love between men and women on screen can also counter harmful gender stereotypes. How many times have we heard parents jokingly refer to their children's friends of the opposite sex as their boyfriend or girlfriend? While it may seem harmless, experts believe that this subconscious coupling of men and women is detrimental to kids' development. Studies show that it's good for kids to have friendships with the opposite sex kids. They also find that the way kids play is almost indistinguishable by gender, and when boys and girls do play together, many of their socialized differences begin to wash away. On screen, when gender expectations are taken out of the mix, we can see play happen between male and female characters. Characters like New Girl Cece and Winston, who in earlier seasons don't get a lot of screen time compared to other character combos, give the show new life when their characters get time alone. Soon, they discover their mutual love for pranks and mess-arounds that secure a deeper bond. Just because you stop living together doesn't mean you stop caring about somebody. Because caring. That is the real mess around. Similarly, the pairing of Robin and Marshall in How I Met Your Mother isn't bound by any romantic or gender expectations, and therefore they're able to have fun bonding over their similar upbringings and their mutual love for sports. The great times they have together gives them a chance to let their guard down and be vulnerable without complication. We will bring you back right here where you're supposed to be. It's, it's not New York without Robin Shabatsky. When men and women can have fun together and break out of gender stereotypes, they can also begin to develop deeper levels of trust. It's a pact we made. It really just means trust me. Gen Z in particular understands the importance of seeing platonic intimacy on screen, as there has been a rise in adopting platonic life partners. It's becoming more common to see young people prioritizing strong platonic friendships above romance, because friends get to the heart of who you really are. You know what I've become. I don't judge 
judge people on their worst mistakes. Maybe you should. You didn't. Platonic connections as a whole give us confidence and lower our stress. And having platonic relationships with people from different backgrounds, orientations, and gender give us different points of view, allowing us more room for empathy and compassion. Even as the landscape changes and these friendships pop up, fans can be quick to ship men and women who appear compatible in favor of romance. I thought they'd be good together. Like PB and J, Pam, Beasley, and Jim. But platonic relationships between men and women give us insight into each other's different perspectives. They expand the way we think about our own life and ultimately bridge our similarities together. Romance can be fulfilling too, but by representing an alternative to the assumed one true pairing, we're placing value on the bonds of friendship and celebrating our connections as individuals beyond fitting into one tried and true formula. You know, I think that if you care about someone and you got a little love, in your heart, there ain't nothing you can't get through together. That's the take. Click here to watch the video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.